Okay, uh, there's a couple people sell motors that run in my port shape, and the question is, why do I have a mushroom looking port shape? Number one, uh, port opening, having an even opening has a lot to do with power delivery. Number two, we're working with junk. These ain't Yamaha's, Kawasaki's, or Suzuki, so we're stuck with the parameters, i.e. port shape that we're given, and let's make the best of it. So like I says, the sparks gone bang, pistons traveling down, hot spent gases, or pressure's built up, and you want your port opening to open nice and even. Now, if you look up wobble, werble, exhaust port, you'll notice it'll be the same shape. Hot gases don't have eyeballs. They're just looking to get the hell out of the cylinder as fast as can. Now you say, hey man, that thing looks awfully wide. No, it's 70% of my bore diameter. And as the piston's traveling down, it's gonna snag a ring. I assure you, this will not snag a ring. There's no difference other than this is 70% of my bore diameter, 33 millimeters wide. That's not being supported by, by rings. Now, soon as soon as my transfers open, I start picking up the cylinder again. Now, I, I want my high pressure wave escaping out fast as possible, bouncing off the rear cone, divergence cone, and reflecting back and pushing a fresh fuel charge back in. And I, it's just a lot more grinding to do to the floor, and I already am not happy with this cylinder design so that's why i go with this number one is the easier shape number two you notice if you notice the corners the bottom corners it's a quarter inch radius this the top where you see ground where it looks like a mushroom that's also a quarter inch radius so there's no more risk other than other than it's 30 mil, uh 30 70 percent of my bore diameter of a ring snagging and another reason why i stop it at the blow down line as soon as them transfer open, if it was open all the way, then that's even less ring support. So I stop it at the blowdown line on purpose. Number one, it's super easy to grind that shape. Number two, that shape works really good. Number three, a lot of people overlook the floor. Your rings pass that floor on the exhaust port. I've seen so many cylinders snag a ring. See? Boom. See people snagging rings when the piston's going down. You can see clear as day when they blow up, it'll be snagged on the bottom. And Bitch Assy was real bad about that. And Robert Bitch Assy, well, he had some hokey port work. Uh, that ain't one. It's it's a blown. I've never blown up a cylinder ever. Never snagged a ring. That ain't it. Well, anyways, I made a video on it, laughing about his setup. Probably gave it away to somebody or threw it in the trash, one of the two, but that's why I choose that shape. Number one, it's easy. It's easy to grind. Number two, it works. Number three, I don't create a bunch of uh, uh, extra port area. And my incoming fuel charge that's reflected back off my cone picks up airspeed right at the end. Instead of being low pressure, I'm hoping that it picks up more pressure and pushes that fuel charge back in there to scavenge correctly. Hopefully this answer helps you. I know it ain't gonna hurt you. Uh, and somebody asked how big is my boost port for a reed motor? It's about 10 millimeters wide. It's right, either, either I get them to open a little bit, you know, a little bit even with the transfer, or a little bit, a little bit after the transfer opening. Is there much difference in power? No, but if you're running reeds and you want to pick up some some mid-range boost ports, good. There's boost ports, and then there's boost ports, and then you got my true transfers. Six transfers. Notice it's isolated. It's standalone. It's fed by the crankcase. And it's not, it has nothing to do with the intake port. The intake's the intake, and those are true transfers ground into the cylinder walls. Hope this video helps, man. It, it, it's real simple stuff. You got to pay attention to what's going on with your motor, and window location is important. Uh, I fumble around with words. But look, a lot of people like to bring their windows super high, right? Well, what's happening is 
your piston's traveling down, right? You're trying to compress gases in, in, into your crankcase. So when your transfer is open, they're pressurized and fuel charge coming. If your window's real high, then it never closes fully. Right now I don't have a base gasket, that's why it's open. It never it never compresses in gases. When the piston's traveling down, it's trying to blow pressure back out into the reed block and all this extra area up to the reed pedals. So window height is important as well. Hope this sheds a little light. It's real simple stuff. It all adds up to nothing when it comes to motorized bicycles. Sure, I could bolt on my piece of crap. Why? It, I can't take credit for that. Rather, rather teach people a little about two strokes, about carburetors. Go down to my playlist and you find rock solid carburetor information. What do you want to know? What kind of brakes I run? Magura hydraulics. What kind of wheels? Halo sport jumps. What kind of hubs? Damn quick with the brake on the other side. Carbon fiber handlebars. DMN volcanoes, some bullshit, some bullshit fancy cranks, uh, composite pedals, Yassini pipes, I don't freaking know, some Brooks seat, my muck luck, this is the baddest part of the whole bike right here folks, there it is, you got this bike, that bike, this bike, and a high speed piece of crap, pipes, frames i'm just not really into the bikes man just trying to share information uh don't know where to get parts don't ask me for links i'm way behind times man i'm just a motor guy trying to help out some two-stroke people